Welcome, welcome, welcome. We did a, I guess, a Q&A asking people their questions about modern. I haven't really looked at what's going to be on here. I don't know what to expect. I, know, I did see some good ones in my notifications. If you have any questions about modern, anything at all, matchups, decks, past, forward, future, present, ask away in the comments down below. I have at least a little bit of decent knowledge on the format. Let's get into it. Uh, reply with your questions about any modern opinion or something you don't know about a matchup or anything about any deck. If I don't know it, I'll ask someone else who does. That's I didn't ask anyone because I know everything about modern. Half true. Going to make a YouTube video answering random modern questions. Let's get to it. Boom. Number one. Why is Creeping Tarpe underplayed card and why is modern worse than vintage? Okay. The second part was... A troll because everyone knows vintage is dead there's a reason why gidra's only one in, in vintage and not modern because you don't really need skill to win you just let your cards play themselves and that is a testament to the fact that gidra won a challenge when he brewed up his own mono green deck where all it did was play four of every single hate card four force of vigors four collector oofs like main deck main deck mind you so yeah vintage very like, they're win trading right now in Vintage. That's that's how popular it is that the people are win trading in it. Not popper anymore. It's Vintage. Why is Creeping Tar Pit an underplayed card and why? Whew, that's actually a very good question. Why would we not play this tap land? And I guess Esper Reanimator or Control. For Control, usually when it's Esper, they're tending to play Celestial Colonnade Editor. Ev uh, Celestial Colonnade anyways because it fits better it's a flyer it's a 4-4 vigilance it just works out to be better this dies to a bolt i think that's a big issue is it dies way easier because if you're in blue anyways you just play the hall of the giants anyways way bigger creature way better closer i think they're just better cards being power crept out where you look at maybe five years ago creeping tar pit saw some play and now it doesn't really see much play outside of like me situations there's no reason for me to put this in my deck over the better card of hall of the giants so i think that's going to be my answer for creeping tar pit let's go to the next question nikachu why doesn't wizards ban the rest of the companions i think it was a big pr issue so when i talked with rnd about it and my suggestion was to make all these huge bannings it it looks bad and also what what else is there it looks bad and just like a little bit too extreme to admit that to admit that fault i think it's a big pr thing that wasn't what they told me more they they were telling me when i was trying to make all these predict pred, uh, prediction bands with amulet running the format and with what was my other one hammer time running the format and he told me they don't like making what could be metas and making bands to try to prevent that so that was what our talk was about but for specifically the wrestling companions why they only hit luris they could justify from a numbers standpoint that luris was an issue that it was just in 30 percent of all decks so that's a, a homogenization justified that ban and errata gets too messy i know they've already done it but having to just what are you going to do this this no longer exists and then people buy their cards like where's this like that that's just not a thing anymore or before you could at least point him to errata but then just deleting a mechanic I don't believe has ever been done before so it's that's a pr issue and admitting a huge fault i don't i don't think that they'll ever do that now i think what will happen is yorian will eat a ban and then we go from there to see if the others are okay but i, I think yorian's a huge issue right now the silent the silent plus four card as your eighth card so i think that's why they did not ban the rest of the companions Though I do think Yarn will be individually banned next. New Bay. Why don't you think Creeping Tar Pit is a good card? It's a very popular card if people want to... Both of them. Both of them freaking want to know. Just Power Crypt out of the better things to do. It doesn't protect itself. Like with Ward. And it's too vulnerable to Bolt. I think is a big issue. Demir, it's literally just Demir Gilgate. It's hard to activate. You just have lands that do stuff that come into play untapped. Okay. Daniel DC says, creativity is underplayed, underdeveloped, or just underperforming? Ooh. These are really good questions, actually. Okay. 
Let's go with... I guess they're asking me which one is it. I don't think it's underdeveloped. I think it's been pushed not as far as it can go, but pushed to a far enough extent of the deck that we can see the power level of it. That it's not really going to go higher, not really going to go lower. I don't think many people play it. It's hard. Like, Solitude is very, very good against the deck. I think that's your big issue, is you're good against Control, but the problem is Solitude makes makes it a, a bit rougher. They've been changing. There's two routes to go with it, as I know currently. There is Emrakul and Archon to give pro creatures. That way your Emrakul is protected from Solitudes. And the other route is to have three Archon of Cruelties. So those are the two ways to take the deck. I'm not a big fan, really, of... I don't know. Because the Archon just feels so bad because you don't win with it, but it's so much value you get off of it. I do think it is underplayed. I think people just choose to play other decks. I think it is a very strong combo control deck. I don't think it's underdeveloped. Underperforming, it usually top eights every other week, I would say. Oh, there yes, there is also a primetime creativity deck, which... Yeah, there is one that is a control-based one that just goes off Valakuts. I just don't think that one's as good as the others. It just tries to go deeper with the lands, but I'm not a huge fan of it. I think the other two are above it. I think that's the worst of the three. I don't think it's underperforming. I think other decks are just better in the metagame. It is a good deck. It will randomly win uh, challenges. I do think it is underplayed, which leads to why its numbers are not as high. So that's that's how I'm going to go with that. On to the next one. Ban card plague. Why did I make that misplay? If X card is so bad, why do I keep winning with it? How do they always have turn through Tron? Quick. Should I thought seize or do you think my opponent has Veil Summer? I don't I don't think these are any like specific questions. <laughs> uh, okay, this is confirmation bias. This is your opponent uh doing things under the table to get that turn through Tron. Are we pulling off a Yuya cheat, marking the cards? I I is Vel I think Velo Summer is a mistake again. Cards nutty, and then why did I make that misplay? Everyone misplays. It's like even the Hall of Famers all misplay. So yeah, on to the next one. Yeah, I, I haven't read half of these, so I don't know what I'm gonna get with any of them. How many more bands are needed? To put the power level of the format in a better place. Oh my gosh. This is a huge question. Because everyone's going to have a different answer. Some people think the format's in a good place already. Some people think that we're far too gone. Uh, some people think we should go back to 2017 mar uh, Magic. Which modern is not that anymore. Right now it's like. Right now I would say it's your own opinion as to where you would want the format to be. And right now, for me, it's just me personally hating certain cards. Like, I've hated Amulet for years, which I believe someone's asked about that, so I won't go into that yet. I think the only card that needs to actually get banned would be Yorion. I think Yorion is mild, uh, is, is quite oppressive. It, it just deletes mid-range decks. Playing against it feels hor horrendous with any previous Luris deck. Yeah, ban stuff till Jason Mindscalf is good again. For my personal opinion, I only difference I would make right now to make modern any better, just just to make make things better immediately, would be a Yorion ban. I can't say Hammer needs to be banned because that's a personal, like vendetta type thing. Amulet is another personal vendetta type thing. But Yorion just has is, is so far ahead of all the other stuff for cards in the format. It just it's just a broken card. It's an 8th card when everyone else is playing with 7. And it's an 8th card that draws 4 to 5 cards. It's it's phenomenal. And that's on top of the 4 or 5 flying body. So that's my opinion is only one band is needed in the format currently that is actually justified. Next question. Can Solstice be a deck that is not laughable? Okay, Martyr gets around this. Like There's some weird random mono white builds that go around. But I think the only way that Soul Sisters is somewhat viable 
is fear fury need at the bare minimum fury needs to not be legal fury being legal kills so many niche decks kills so many creature based uh anything with a one mana one one basically strategy fury really is also another oppressor of the format as crazy as that is it's just way too good of value you're paying zero mana you use two cards and you're usually at minimum getting a two for two for free it's it's insane other things that would have to happen for it oh jeez, you would have to have a a white monkey but that wouldn't even be insult there you because what what garbage cards are you using right now you're using what two mana one 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 mana one one all they do is gain life and that doesn't take you anywhere you don't have really good inter interaction outside of skyclave and thalia so you don't interact well you're very easy to be interacted with and your strategy alone isn't that strong anyways you're putting out one ones that at the best is going to be a six six flyer that dies to uh, prismatic ending and what's the what's the unholy heat so you would need yo oh, jeez to you would have to have some broken white drops that didn't warp the format and people put elsewhere so yeah there's not really a way that this deck can be made uh, uh, not laughable if Fury was banned, then I think it'd be a better way to talk about it. But with Fury being legal, no. Okay. How do Dread deck sideboard? Everything seems like a crucial cog in the deck. Remove a piece, enabler, dredge, and the whole deck stops working. Okay. So there's old type of dredge and new type of dredge. New one is the multicolored uh, gaze mill yourself. And you're going, I think it's four, four or five color. And then old school was what everyone knows, just using the one man artifact to mill yourself and uh, go from there. Hope they hit a cathartic turn two. What are the usual cuts? I think it's usually. Let me, let me pull up a dredge deck real quick. I, I believe it is usually like two dredgers at max what's the name of a, a prize let's go prize amalgam this is a question i could have asked could have asked sodak uh okay like in this list it'd be dark blast if dark blast is worth like is worthless in a matchup those would come out i don't think you cut chills because you need them to push for damage gaze the enabler That's so you, yeah. You can't cut a land. You can't cut Narcomibas. You need those. You need these here. I guess it would be maybe one to two, one to two ghouls. I have Sodek, uh, Sodek's guide, Cyborg guide. I guess that'd be my best way to answer this question. Is subscribe to Sodek for his Cyborg guide. That's that's the best way I can answer this. Is pushing that to somewhere else. Modern Solutions. Modern Solutions is what they're called. Because I am not going to give you the best of us. I know I said I would look it up. So I kind of lied about that. But here we are. I guess that is the answer. Sodek. Putting, pushing you towards Sodek on Patreon. Modern Solutions. Spend money. But for me, if I had to board out four cards, usually it'd just be like Dark Blast if it's not a creature matchup. I usually trim on... I, just, I literally just trim Dredgers. Like I'll trim an Ox and I'll trim two Dredgers. But that's definitely not right. I would just go there. Okay, next question. As we've shown, I may not know that every answer. Okay. Is Relic for Genesis an overrated card in this modern metagame? No, it is not. Living End is very, very strong. I think it is quite good against Living End. Uh, what else has been super prominent? It is also very good against DRC, Murktide. I do... Th oh, no, Lantern... I don't think Lantern's better because you're, you're trying to grind. The only reason why Lantern was good before was more so because of Luris and only having to use one mana to exile the yard rather than use two mana, two, two to exile the yard. Also, it doesn't target. I think that's one another relevant thing is both of these do not target because uh, usually the decks that are trying to protect their graveyard, they'll bring in Leyline of Sanctity. Sometimes good against Ren. Yeah, sometimes good against Ren. Also being able to tap every turn to control Delirium control ren i don't think it's i think it's exactly where it should be i don't think it's super popular i don't think it's super unpopular it's it sees play i played it as three of in my four color deck 
I think it is good in the meta game. I think it's a fine one to play. It just depends. Like, don't put it in if you're a graveyard deck. Don't put it in if you're a, a DRC type strategy. Don't put it in if what was the last thing? If you're using Snapcaster Mages, that's another thing. Is don't play it with your snaps. So, yeah, I would play this card. I think I think Relic's good in the current meta game. Okay, do you think Merfolk is viable deck? No, uh, that you can play to contend with the rest of the meta, assuring, assuming you're proficient with it. Okay, can you win matches with Merfolk? Yes. Is it going to be super consistent? Are you going to have a high win rate? No. If you take it to a GP, take it to 10 GPs. Are you going to top 8? The odds are very, very high that you're not going to. Because you have too many free cards dealing with Merfolk now. You have uh, Fury. You have Solitude. The four color goes over you. You can take it, you can take it to FNM. You can 4-0. You can, you can go undefeated at FNM. But if you want to take it to a big tournament, I d do not think Merfolk is the play. We have maybe once every three months, someone spikes a top eight at a modern challenge. So you could have, like, the perfect version of Merfolk. The problem is just it's it's too expensive of a deck to get things going. So that's that's where we're at with this. I don't think it's super viable. It can win, but it's not gonna it's not going to go a whole 15 rounds. I think the best we had was a top eight recently in the last three months. Okay, next up. Which is actually better than one mana red card? Which is the better one mana red card? <sighs> okay, I think it's... I don't think Bolt's that good anymore. I think Bolt's a good card, but I don't think it's as good as it used to be. So if we're going between DRC and ROG, and I don't want to lie... So I've been so heavy on the ROG train. I think DRC is far worse because Loris is gone. You can have both. You can have multiple DRCs out, but only one ROG. ROG fits into anything red. DRC, you have to, you have to put some cards in to make her work based around... Like, Bobble goes in if you're playing DRC. So you're forced You're forced to do that. I am, I am way more scared of a turn one ROG than I am of DRC. I build my deck around ROG. I don't build my deck around DRC. So I think Rog is the better one mana card. I know some people like has evasions, a 3-3 flyer, but I'm way more scared of a Rog taking over a game than a DRC taking the game. DRC is just hyper efficient. Rog can flat out win the game by hitting it to fairy, hitting a prismatic ending, hitting so many things off the top. I know it's random, but it still has that that chance. It's not even a low chance. Like it draws cards as a one drop and it ramps you. It is a must answer turn one. Or you get a, a super high advantage in the game. So my pick is going to be Rog. Bolt doesn't kill like half the cards in the form. It doesn't kill Omnath, which is a big deal. It doesn't cleanly answer a bunch of cards because they come back. It doesn't exile. Not being able to exile, I think, is a big deal. It doesn't kill Ren and Six. It's it's a playable removal spell. That sometimes goes face. Unholy Heat is just better. Prismatic Enemy is just better. I just... I don't like this card because it doesn't kill half the format anymore. Why is Magic so expensive if, it's, if, if, if it is a kid's game? I don't know if it's serious or not. <sighs> Uh, it's exp it's expensive because we turned a kids game into collectible game. I guess vintage Pokemon did the same thing. Yeah, we are we're all kids at heart, right? We're all kids at heart, so that's that's where we took this to the extreme. And instead of letting wizards print the crap out of cards, we complained, and now we are stuck with super high expensive cards because we can't. We we'd we'd rather have this false sense of security that our cards are worth money compared to them mass printing something. So that we, we did it to ourselves. The past did it to us now. Who's the modern who's the current modern trophy leader? Pygonthi is the modern trophy leader. He needs to touch grass. Next question. Why is the MTG community at large so What is this word? Let me look up this word. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure what this word meant. This word means uh, 
complaining in a petulant or whiny manner. Why are we such whiny babies? That's what this was. I had no idea what this word. I was scared for a second. Why are we such whiny babies? I think it's Twitter as a whole. I don't think it's just us. I think it's because we're on Twitter and the platform that we use is more more the culprit of this. It just gives us a place to give us a voice to just talk. And what do we have to say? Just whatever nagging thing is on our mind. Because people tend to focus on negative more than they focus on positive. And so the odds that you're voicing out your opinion happen to be the negative side versus the positive side. Also, if one person posts a negative thing, people tend to bandwagon and hop on that. Like, ban Luris. Imagine that, that that bandwagon train was huge and people were just jumping on it. It needed to be banned, but people just voiced their opinion agreeing with that as such. So that's, I think that's why we just love wanting so much. It gives us something to do more than anything. Imagine if we didn't have Twitter. Imagine if we had to, imagine if we had to do this on a forum of say arena made you know those old school forums they used to make on the website like say world of warcraft they'd have forums people would just post a thread talk about it if we were on that i don't think we'd be as negative because well you, you wouldn't hear about it because no one would be on it okay if you could add one card from outside modern to the format what would it be oh i know this A card, okay, a card that isn't banned. A card that is outside, a Lurin. Mm, that, mm, may, oh, Lurin is such a, there's so many sweet legacy cards. Let me take a Gander at Dex real quick. It's it's definitely a, a legacy card. I'm not sure which. I, I, I used to love lands at one point. Maybe not a fast mana. <sighs> Days was in the conversation at one point. But Days is just absolutely busted. Recruit of the Guard. I freaking love Recruit of the Guard. But we already have Imperial Recruiter, so I'm not as high on it. That is a very, very good question. I used to be so high on, like, Maverick. <gasps> oh, no, this is a banned card. I'm trying to think of a non-banned card I would want in the format. <gasps> Muxus. Muxus was one that I absolutely loved that I think would be absolutely sweet for the format. That's my pick. I'm I'm a big Goblins fan. For those of you who know, let me show you guys what Muxus is. Would it be busted? Maybe. But would it be fun? It'd be so freaking fun. Uh, when Muxus enters the battlefield, reveal top six cards you library. Put all Goblin creature cards with converted mana costs, five or less from among them, on the battlefield. So it's a Coco for any Goblin, basically. Because it would give such a sick engine to goblins i think it'd be a really fun one to add and it wouldn't break the format it would not break the format that's the best part of it my other one would probably be goblin lackey i love goblins <laughs> very very sick question give it a heart give it a down vote give it a heart okay i saw this one i really like this question as well why do jun players prefer lilian of the veil over gris gris is like a bitter blossom and dreadborn in one card uh what's okay there's there's two reasons there's sucking cost fallacy is that they have them and they want to use them and then the other one is oh what's just trying to like remember the good old days trying to trying to relive the good old days when liliana veil was actually a good card i think gris is way better now gris does a lot more it's not countered by force of negation it has doesn't have a super good ultimate but I think it's really efficient. And it kills whatever you want it to kill. Where, where Lily doesn't do that. You don't get to pick. It's literally just nostalgia at this point. It, it, it has not felt good at all to play this card. And it dies to Unholy Heat. Doesn't trade too well. It does not feel as good as it used to to, to ditch both players' resources. The reason why, because top decks from your opponent are so much stronger than yours. Their top deck can be an iteration, which leads you to another iteration, to a ROG. So they have top decks that are two-for-ones that can lead into more two-for-ones, two-for-ones. So controlling their hand is not very good anymore when the top deck just leads to insane value. Omnath, bonkers. Everything is a play a card out, draw a card, and get insane value from that one card. 
Why is Fire Claire Niv struggling so much since MH2 has been released? You can't play Fury. You can't play Salty. You can, but they don't get fetched off of Niv Mizzet. The four color deck just does what your decks want to do more efficiently. Because you, if you, what do you, what's the word? Take out the hits for Niv Mizzet. Your Niv gets worse because you're replacing them with one mana removals such as Matic or Marches. You're replacing it with Rog main deck. You're replacing it with Fury and Solitudes. You have to make room for all those before you're playing all these multicolored cards. So you take that out. Instead of your Niv drawing, drawing six, you're going to maybe hit one to two now. And then it does. it's just a 6-6 a six, six flyer. Well, sure, if it, it lands, it draws you cards, but the it's going to draw you less cards. The cost efficiency of the old cards is not as high. I think that's another big issue is the cards that you're forced to play are not that good outside of like Ren and Six. Like what else are you playing? Lenny Helix, Kaya's Guile. They're they're okay, but they're not they're not very good or cost efficient compared to what we have now. Prismatic Ending is the perfect one mana removal that can go all the way up to removing five drops. March is super, uh, not perfect, but it's still a very very strong answer. So I think uh, Power Creep is just pushed out Niv Mizzet. You're forced to play better cards, but you can't. They don't really fit in the visit. When you're playing a mid-range deck with Besaidu who endures in the sideboard, what are you taking out for them? Is it a land slot sideboard? Good or a waste of a slots? Uh, I would. It is not a waste of a slot. I'll probably play three to four in every single four-color deck I play. You never take out lands to bring these in. These are, you don't consider these lands when you bring them in. So four-color tip. Do not take out lands to put in Besages. They are super worth it. Generally, you're playing so many cards, it's whatever is worse in the matchup. Sometimes March is bad in the matchup. Sometimes uh, Monkeys are really bad against a Hardened Scales deck. So that's... Yeah, so that, that's my advice for that one. How many more do we have? How does Black deck beat Rip? Uh, there's two ways now, I think. There is the, what's the two mana exile and you lose life equal to the CMC? There's that card and then there's the new mono black card where there's, they are forced to sacrifice. They're forced to sacrifice. It is invoke despair. Creature enchantment planeswalker. So that's one sack. And then the other one is Feed the Swarm. So you target creature enchantment and opponent controls, you lose like you'll CMC. So that's your two cards to answer rip. And then there's a third one, which is opponent sacrifices an enchantment of three mana or a creature. I don't remember that one. I don't recommend that one. It's not very good. Where are we at? Which is the most underrated card of the format? <sighs> I think Esper Sentinel doesn't get as much hate. Like people hate that card, but they don't they don't realize that it is a card that is probably top five best cards to come from MH2. It's it's a like it's a one mana Thalia that draws you cards. It's just absolutely insane. What up? Primeval Titan? Now people know that that under uh Primeval Titan is busted. People oddly want to ban it. shouldn't be banned. Like if anything gets banned in Amulet. I would have yeah, I would have to say that. Or any like sleeper cards. I don't I don't know too many sleeper cards to this format. Where is it? Cards, popular cards and staples, modern. No, these are all super popular. I would yeah, no, I'd I just have to go with Esper Sentinel would be my pick for underrated card. It's literally one of my most hated cards in the format. It it just it's so brutal whether you're on the player of the draw having to answer that card. Violent Outburst. I I think Violent Outburst is just super strong. I don't think people underrate it. People have been dumpstering with that deck. Yeah, so many decks work because of Esper Sentinel being the backbone of it. That you, you can buy yourself some turns. You can slow down your opponent for this 
one mana. Just an absolutely insane one mana. Like, you have to blow Solitude for or else you're just giving your opponent cards. It's it's just nuts. It's an insane draw engine. How did Wizard went so bad with Modern and Magic overall? Uh, Fire being bought... Fire Initiative, changing how they design cards. Hasbro buying them out, so they changed to more got to generate money versus what they did before, whatever it was. Whatever it was used to be working. Uh, so Fire and Hasbro buyout are going to be my two answers for what went wrong. Because what's going to sell MH3, not worse cards, it's going to be stronger cards than what we currently have. That's what's going to sell MH3. You need more broken cards to fit in this format because what's going to be playable it has to be even more busted cards than we currently have. Are we at the point of using unbanned to fix format issues? I don't think any unbanned is going to fix the format. I don't think any ban unbans are going to make the format better or fixed. Like, maybe, like, it could be playable. The problem you have is, even if it doesn't look like it ca could cause a problem, what if it does? And so I think that's a big reason why there's not that many unbans anymore. Look at Golgari Grave Troll. Gagari Grave Troll is supposed to be safe, fine. They unbanned it and ended up freaking being the best segment format on the back of Gagari, Dra uh, Gagari Grave Troll. And so it is our, it's literally been banned twice. And so I think that's a big example as to why we're not having as many unbans as before because it makes them look bad. Gagari Grave Troll was, was fine until Prize of Malgamic Gardic, though. I don't remember the time of everything. Uh, I believe it was unbanned when Twin was banned, right? Which would make it January of 2016. January of 2016. <laughs> uh, and then Shadows... I don't know when Shadows was. Shadows over in Estrad release date april so a little bit down a little bit down the line and then it became a problem i don't know how they interact with each other who would this be this would be the the rules committee the r d committee which some are which some of them are in uh some of the rules committee are in game design so they, they would have to look forward and be like we're gonna unban grave troll but then also stop and say is this gonna be too strong with cathartic and prize the amalgam so i think that's that's just a hard one to look at but either way they just look bad uh wizard just looks bad that they unbanned a card and they had to reban it what happened to gds was Luris really so important to the deck that it's banning made gds unplayable no it's still GDS is still very played. GDS is still a very fine deck. It's just people are doing other things because Lurus was busted. It was, a, it was a very, very strong deck. Now it's just a playable deck versus uh, a meta-shaping deck. So, it's yeah, definitely still sees playable. It, it's still around. It's still a thing. You can choose to play Street Wraith or not. You get to play Murktide with it. Still here. Still going strong. When was the last time GDS placed? Let's take a gander real quick. When was the last time that this deck did anything? Seventh Modern Super Qualifier. Two days ago. Canister 32nd, 29th. Did okay in some prelims. Indianapolis, it got tenth, but I think that was I think that might have been a team event, so take that. No, there wouldn't be this many people team. Man, maybe it was. But yeah, it just it just uh top aided the super qualifier. Is Lily playable? No, it is not. You can play it, it's like niche playable, it's just not a very good card anymore. Is Esper Reanimator promising? I love Esper Reanimator. I don't know where it is in the current metagame. People aren't too high on it. I think people are, are now starting to play more Graveyard Hate with Living End becoming more popular. So I think that's a bigger issue. I I would never tell anyone not to build this deck. I think it's a fun deck. 
I don't know how far he can take it, but it's definitely a viable deck, viable strategy as well. I'm a big fan of Esper Animator. Blood Moon is well positioned, but we don't see much Ponza. Thoughts on the deck? Ponza isn't a very good deck because Land Destruction is not very good. You're just dying to what's on the field. It doesn't matter if you go Land Destruction, if they go turn one Rogvon, that's another big issue. Uh, what is it missing? Things to try. It's missing cheaper Land Destruction. Three mana Land Destruction is just too slow. So that's 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 pretty much my issue with Ponza. Land Destruction isn't good enough at the moment. If it was two mana and yet other ways to tax, sure, which is what they tried with the red white deck, but Luris is gone, so that deck got much worse. The boom bust, Esper Sentinels type strategies. Um That's like the only thing I can think of that they could Oh yeah, Ren Ren and Six is legal as well. So that also makes Ponza horrific. If Ren wasn't legal, then Ponza gets actually quite a bit better. But if a resolved Ren comes out, Ponza instantly loses. And Rog is horrendous to play against because they just play Rog and their land issues are gone. Why Elementals versus traditional four color? Ooh, that is that's a hard question. <sighs> Different matchups, different bad matchups, different good matchups. I don't know civics as to which one is good against or bad against which, but I know they have different pools of decks that they're good against. I believe Elemental is better against Torok decks. Being able to tutor up whatever Elemental you need for a situation. Uh, uh, four color being raw value. Elemental is very good against control type strategies with Cavernous Souls. Uh, four color. They both beat control, so I don't even know what I'm talking about there. I, I I played against both four color and elementals this weekend. Elementals just has everything. Everything's a two for one. I guess four color is also two for one, but it's hard to deal because they play these. This plays the board a lot more. Like they're creating the questions, and this is more having the answers to everything while putting up stuff. Elementals pretty much loses to torpor. But yeah, torpor orb, torpor orb pretty strong against this they play elementals and ren and six to fairy they want their value to be off of risen reef they want their value to be off of uh tanya the whatever the five drop is that creates five fives so if you like playing more creature based strategies go elementals if you want to play more iteration counter spells uh Prismatic ending, March to have answers. You're more of an answer deck versus the question deck. They're both very, very strong, though. I think it's just a matter of preference. I think they're both very strong in any metagame. Is it true you shouldn't trust any four-color cyber god that says the board and Emrakul against blue-white? As it best, it gains you 13 life, and at worst, literally just draws your opponent's free cards. I don't know who came up with this meme, but... One, four color doesn't need to bring an Emrakul anyways to be blue white. It's a landslided matchup. It's like 70 30. It's ridiculously in four color's favor. And even if you do bring Emrakul and you cast it, the odds that they still have Solitude are low because they have to answer your Omnath. They have to answer your Rogvon. They already have to use answers on your broken creatures. So if they happen to have a Solitude after the fact, it's big. And then I've had times where I go to, I, I, I'm on four color, I play against blue white. I go Emrakul, and I'm going Spreading Seas, Targeted Land, Fell to Fine. So that's already a plus two. Then you have uh, Walker, Kill Other Walker, uh, Creature, goes in Emrakul. So it's like a plus six. Like it, it, You're literally just, it's a it's one card that'll give you such huge advantage. Seize what you're in your opponent hand, answer uh, any Planeswalkers. I don't know why people are just saying it's, Maybe they're just not smart enough to figure out how to use the their opponent's deck to create negative value for himself. Maybe that's the issue. But even if you gain 13 life, you're still going to get plus 3 to 5 or higher. It just answers so many things. So I don't know why this uh, meme came about. Next up. Do you think free elemental spells were a mistake? Fury basically just ruined all creature tribal uh, decks. I think, oh man, I think they were a mistake. 
but they pushed modern forward. They wanted to make modern a stronger format. Fury has pushed out a ton of strategies in the format, which has been another issue. Solitude. Solitude is amazing, but also very limiting to what strategies are viable. Uh, it's it's too strong of an answer for free. I don't know if I would wish that they never printed them. It just has completely warped modern. But if we take them away... The problem is if we take them away, we don't have good enough uh, answers to what is currently in the format. You don't have good enough answers to Murkta. You don't have good enough answers to Planeswalkers. Is Solitude better than Plow? I don't play with Plow, so I'm not too sure. They're both nuts. Not sure. Yeah. If Oh, yeah. Hammer Time. If you don't have these, Hammer Time takes over the format. That's another issue is Hammer Time will just be insane if you don't have these. So were they a mistake? Probably, but it's the mistake also comes with other cards were also a mistake. There's a whole bunch of mistakes made as to why we're stuck with this. You can't take these away because there's so many other problems in the format. And yeah, Fury has pushed out basically every tribal deck. Tribal decks are horrendous to play. Even in uh, Eternal formats like Legacy, it's really, really bad. Okay. Do you side Emrakul in the Mirror Blue White Control? Yes, you do. Bring that bad boy in. Because you know why? You know what's happening? It's usually... Drago, 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 Drago. And you usually end up getting your enchantment from Shark Typhoon, a instant from a Archmage's Charm or a Counterspell, usually jamming the Fairy somewhere in their uh, land, so that's four, and then a Solitude. So that's five types. What fifth type am I missing? Oh, so, and then you have Sorcery as well with Prismatic Ending, if you have to answer that to Fairy. So you get, you get four to six types really easy. And no... No blue white mirror is going to end with people having less than eight lands realistically. So it's very good. Usually it's just draw, go, play it out, and then wipe your opponent's hand. Solitude, solitude, force negations, get everything out. So yeah, definitely bring it in. I am, what am I in right now? I am 3 0 against blue white in Vegas, and I am 2 0 against blue white. Uh, over the the seven K I just was in. Like my my deck is like my deck's usually built to beat blue white. Okay, would you sign Jace the mirror mind sculptor in the Murktide mirror? Yes, it is a very good engine in the mirror. Playing Cowgirl in June, I will see. Yeah, bring this bad boy in. Simple question, simple answer. Why do you hate Amulet? Is this the last question? Gosh darn it. Uh, why do I hate Amulet? Ending on my, the most hated deck. <laughs> like, look, 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 look. Out of all the questions, this is the most liked one. <laughs> it's, any, okay, anytime I go against Amulet, I complain. Anytime uh, it gets brought up, I complain. Okay, one reason I hate Amulet. Number of cards, it's banned like four, three, th what? Four cards already? Modern MTG ban list. How many cards is, has it pushed to getting banned? Okay, let's go. Okay, Clapo's legal, but that's not because of that. Where is it? Um, Feel the Dead. Feel the Dead was... I know it was already a problem, but it was really a problem in Amulet. Uh, the second one is Green Sun Zenith. We will never get Green Sun Zenith unbanned because of Amulet. That's 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 never coming back because of Amulet. Where's Once Upon a Time? Once Upon a Time, also never coming back. Lattice. I think if Lattice is legal, they'd be playing four cards again. So that's that like that's another small push that pushes to Lattice never coming back. Uh, Summer Bloom also banned. Lattice is Etron thing mainly, but it also was turning into. Uh, every, uh, Amulet players putting it in their deck because you could just turn two card and then turn three lattice.
and then Summer Bloom. All all banned, not coming back because of it. I don't think there's a yeah. Okay, so that's that's one thing. It, like there's cards that I want unbanned that'll never come back because amulet's legal. Uh, people it, like it kills. If you're on the draw, you can just lose to it because it can just kill you turn two. It's for most of it. It's a very straightforward deck to play. You just have to know the lines for the for the base of it, right? Like not the super complex situations that the the masters of amulet know about. So it's it's an easy, straightforward deck initially that a lot of people can just pick up and play and get free wins with. You just literally just resolve one Titan and your value is so far ahead you just win the game. I I just hate that it like the way that you interact with it, not very fun. Uh just like Lango, Lango. Um Efficiency, redundancy multiple amulets just being super busted fast fast mana is another big thing which i hate because like we banned all the other fast mana stuff but we still let this still be legal and i don't know i can't really go too in depth i i i complain about this every day <laughs> i just it should not be legal so many cards just banned because of it. it's so dumb but yeah i think that's all our questions from this thank you so much for sending in your guys's questions believe yeah i believe we got through all of them um i hope you guys have a wonderful day if you have anything else let me know in the comments down below i'll see you guys next time